Hi, I'm Luke Perry. I'm Christy Swanson. You're watching the big picture. Picture, bringing yeah. you Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. This week on The Big Picture, Luke Perry sinks his teeth into the movies, Jennifer Jason Lee and Bridget Fonda are single white females, and Annabelle Sciorra is a shrink with a problem. Plus new movies from Michael J. Fox, Clint Eastwood and Brian De Palma, and a second generation action star. Hi, I'm Chris Conley, and thank you for not watching the Olympics. Anyway, you can tell a lot about a TV guy by the first movie he decides to do after he becomes really big. Does he choose a starring vehicle or does he choose something hip? Lesson one in Luke Perry hits the theaters this week with Buffy the Vampire Slayer, in which Luke appears alongside such unlikely people as Donald Sutherland, Rutger Hauer, and Pee Wee Herman himself, Paul Rubens. Now this one actually stars Christy Swanson in the title role as a mall doll who discovers that she has what it takes to take the bite out of two 1,500-year-old vampires who just settled into Southern California. I guess they just like the climate. Anyway, Luke is the town misfit Pike who warms to Buffy's task, shaves off his sideburns, and warms to Buffy herself. There's something, there's something going weird. on around here. I don't know. Weird. Something real weird. Suck my kiss! Luke plays Pike. I'm Pike. I play Buffy. Let me get this straight. She meets this guy, Merrick. We train girls to be slayers. He tells her that she's uh, the chosen one. I am so sure. Chosen in life to slay vampires. Bad, bad boys, come with me, come with me, yeah, yeah. I gotta get away from the vampires. So I get caught in a lot of uh, situations I'm not prepared for, but old Buff is there to save the day. Hi. Hi. What are you doing here? What am I doing here? I'm saving your butt. Everybody's seen a lot of vampire movies. Um, been a lot of them made. What's different about ours is we take the funny angle on it. That is a bad guy. Can we go, please? Ah! 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 Paul Rubens is um, hysterical in the movie. You ruined my new jacket. Kill him a lot. You know, you can't come up with anything too stupid or too strange. Paul will make it work. Admit it, Buffy. Aren't there times when you just feel less than fresh? As an actor, you try and stretch, and when you do other projects, you look for something a little different. Mm -hmm. This guy was 180 degrees from the guy I play on 90210. I'll buy that. I mean, the thing I liked about doing it was, um, you know, if you, when you came to a point where we had to do this seriously or you go for the laugh, I'll go for the joke every time. Stab him in the heart! Ah! Well, vampires of the world, beware. Mm. Okay, you probably noticed, by the way, that Luke Perry doesn't appear in the ads for this little movie. In fact, they've got the cheerleader with the stake in her hands. But they did rush this movie out to get it out during the summer when 90210 happens to be in hiatus. Well, in recent years, the movies have offered The Nanny from Hell in Hand That Rocks the Cradle, The Mistress from Hell in Fatal Attraction, and The Cop from Hell in Unlawful Entry. In mid-August, you get to meet The Roommate from Hell. Single white female stars Bridget Fonda as a young urban professional who's just a little less bright than she thinks she is. Now, when her engagement goes, she searches for a roommate and finds one in the shy presence of Jennifer Jason Lee. But Lee has a past, and it's not a pretty one. She starts to take on many of Fonda's personal characteristics, and before long, these two are arguing about a lot more than who left the dishes in the sink. Imagine the real world with weapons. Hey, are you Allison Jones? I'm Hedra Carlson. Hedra? When can you move in? She takes in Hetty because Hetty seems to be even worse off than herself. And a beautiful on you. And it makes her feel strong. And, boy, I, I am more together than I thought I was because this person is really sort of floundering. And there's when the mutual use relationship begins. Where the hell have you been? <gasps> Hetty, what are you doing in my room? She's a um, borderline personality, goes into psychotic episodes. She's someone who doesn't feel whole unless she's fused with another person. And that person ends up being Allie. I've got a surprise for you. You've got to be kidding. 
I love myself like this. The dynamics are between the two women. I mean, my, my character is not in competition with Allie for the man. She's in competition with the man for Allie. Hey, sleepy guy. Allie? No, not Allie. Somebody mentioned to me about this is sort of like the yuppie nightmare, and all these films are about the, the new sort of, uh, you've got your job and you've got your nice clothes and your car and everything, but something, something comes in and ruins it all anyway. She needs me. I read in, in one of the books that I was reading for research, there was a woman who said, um, you know, what can you do? You can beg, you can plead, you can do anything you can, but ultimately, if they don't want to love you, you have to kill them. Don't make me come get you! Look at me! And, you know, it make, <laughs> makes perfect sense in that kind of warped logic. You know, someone who's really disturbed. I know you weren't yourself when you did this thing. No, I was you. All right, scary stuff. You know, Jennifer Jason Lee was going to start with Bridget Fonda in Singles, a movie we'll be telling you about towards the end of August, but she dropped out of that film to take the lead in Rush. Now they're getting a chance to work together. Well, speaking of TV stars going to movies, Michael J. Fox seems to have a pretty good idea about works for him on the big screen these days. Those fast, frantic comic roles. He's returning to the big screen for the first time since last summer's Doc Hollywood in a film that's tentatively entitled For Love or Money. Now, Fox in this one plays a hotel concierge. That's one of those guys whose job it is to get or do anything that guests want him to do. Kind of like Donahue, I suppose. Anyway, here's a big picture scouting report to tell you all about it. Yeah, it's a love or money situation. He's taking the money. The more you don't want something, the more likely it is you'll get it. Background action. Action. Directing is sort of overrated. Been bored from the first day, which is great. The important thing about directing is to get an incredibly good script and cast the best actors possible. And if you've done that, you've done 97% of your work. And then the other 3% is basically entertaining the cast and crew with antics. Oh, can we shoot now? Is that remotely possible? Quiet, quiet, quiet. I'm so ready to throttle somebody. Is it a poodle or something? I just don't think you can make a funny movie unless everybody's having fun. Whoops, whoops. I just know that people really like to laugh, you know? Oh, you don't concentrate too much on, on the message or whatever, because there'll always be nine magazines that'll figure out later what you were trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. This is shot in the 90s, but feels like the 40s, actually. Uh, uh, it uh, sort of has a little bit of a sort of screwball nature, but it has a deep, deep love story. Anyway, that's life on this set. And playing the female lead in For Love or Money as a mobster's mall is Gabrielle Anwar, whom you might have caught in Wild Hearts Can't Be Broken. But you probably didn't. Anyway, when we come back, we've got Sean Connery and Annabelle Sciorra. But first, also coming out this week is Bebe's Kids, the animated version of some characters created by one of the great lost comic talents of our day, the late Robin Harris. So I go to pick her up the next day. She got three more kids with her. Uh, what's this? What's this? These are children. Oh, wait, you said you have a kid. These are Bebe's kids. This is LaShawn. Oh, kid number one. Ow! Out of beat jig. Oh, This is Kalia. What's up, little? What's up? Kind of militant. Sure, Ferris Shaka Khan. Oh, come on, man, give okay, me that's up. Okay, okay. Man, you don't know what I said. I said, oh. That's pitiful. Old man like you. Well, look at this. You can win trips to some of the summer's hottest tours every Tuesday only on Hanging with MTV starting at 4. Each time you see MTV's summer tour party plane, call the phone number trailing behind it to win. This Tuesday, win trips to see Michael Jackson in Bremen, Germany. Watch for the party plane and phone number on Hanging with MTV's summer tour Tuesdays, this Tuesday at 4. From Touchstone Pictures, he was a powerful crime lord who took no prisoners. 
they were three extraordinary brothers who could fly higher, strike faster, awesome. and hit harder than any bad guy around. I want those kids. Now, America's newest heroes are facing their biggest challenge. They're geek. And only the best will win. Three Ninjas, rated PG. Parental guidance suggested. Starts Friday, August 7th. Last night, I had a real good dream. Sunkiss Summer Blast Sweepstakes. Win a Baja Powerboat, a Yamaha Superjet, or a thousand other prizes. See store displays for details. And yet there's still only one place dedicated to giving it your way. And it's the number one maker of chicken sandwiches. We're the one, not one, but two. We're the one made just for you. Great taste the chicken on a bun. We're the one. We're the one to give you more. You're the one we're cooking for. Best Did you hear about Color Quick from Qtex? It's really great. By the time you get to your pinky, <laughs> your thumb is dry. Cool. It's new Color Quick from Qtex. MTV Buzz Quick. Watch the video and see what the buzz is about on MTV. Protective services provided by West Coast Detectives, headquartered in North Hollywood, California. Thank God you're back. You know, every year the American Cinematheque Moving Picture Ball honors someone with a long and distinguished history in the movies. Last year, for example, it was Martin Scorsese. This year, the honoree was Sean Connery, and all of his buddies managed to turn out. Now, you've got to ask yourself, what is it about Connery that makes him so appealing to movie fans of every generation? His work in The Untouchables, in The Hunt for Red October, or is it just bondage? Who are you? Bond. James Bond. Beauty. Charisma. I love it. It took a whole kind of generation along and it's turned out uh, almost three decades. It's now 1992. I did the first one in 1962. That's 30 years ago. Um, and it had a certain kind of momentum because the timing was very important. It came out at the time when people were sort of fed up with the kind of kitchen sink and that sort of drama. My name is Pussy Galore. I must be dreaming. I think everybody, uh, men, women, uh, children, can relate to, uh, to his incredible presence. He's, he's just got this overwhelming, uh, yeah, manhood. He's a real man. I can't say for sure what it is, but I know that when I told my grandmother, my mother, and my 15-year-old sister that I was starring in a picture with Sean Connery, all of them fell down and fainted. So I think he's probably got the broadest base of female admirers in the world. There are elements in certain movies that I like very much. I mean, they come in cycles. And uh, when one time when I was in Spain, I drove off, and I, and I think it was in 14 months I did The Man Who Would Be King and The Wind and the Lion and Robin and Marion. If you're in trouble, I can save you. There's nothing to be saved from. I don't want you, Robin. But you've got me. I like the way you look. It's more than I can save for you. We never were indoors. It was all on location. And then... I think it suddenly got uh, things like uh, the Indiana Jones and the Red October, and they just come in cycles. It's very difficult to just say, oh yeah, that was the role I wanted, or I felt best about that one film. 
It's a kind of eclectic combination, you know. I have to tell you that I'm fully aware of what a lucky man I am. As an actor, I've been able to play an English king, an American cop, a Russian naval officer, an Irish coal miner, and an Arab prince. All of them are Scotsmen. Who would claim to be that who was not? Man, you want the definition of a take-charge guy in a movie, that's got to be Sean Connery. On the other hand, you see Annabelle Sciorra in a picture and you just start worrying about her right away, don't you? Well, she's in trouble again, actually. Whispers in the Dark stars Sciorra as a psychiatrist who's looking for love outside the office. And for a while, it looks like she's found it with hunky Jamie Sheridan. Then she starts seeing him with some of her wackier patients, and not even the cop, played by Anthony LaPaglia, can help her out. Are you nervous yet? You will be. It seems to me that it's a bit realer than most psychological thrillers and that characters are more complicated um, and a little bit more honest than uh, some of the psychological thrillers that I've seen recently where I think the characters are a bit more one-dimensional. This is uh, Doug McDowell. Right. Dr. Hecker was Eve's psychiatrist, though. Doug here dated Eve several times. Maybe you heard about him in one of your sessions. Well, unless Billy O's got any more questions for you, you can go. No, fine. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Nice meeting you. Excuse me. Doug, Ann. I know the two of you had a relationship. I talked to a bunch of people who saw the fireworks in the lobby the other night. Call us if you have any additional information, okay? All right. Well, you know, some 20 years ago, the charismatic Bruce Lee virtually invented the martial arts movie with Enter the Dragon. But Chopsaki Pictures, as they're sometimes called, suffered a major blow with Lee's untimely death a few years later. Now, Brandon Lee, who's Bruce's handsome son, stands ready to kickbox his way to stardom himself in Rapid Fire, an action thriller about a drug war. I always wanted to be in film. I wanted to be an actor since I was really young. But no, I didn't always want to be in martial arts films. Um, but I did always kind of know that my first big part would probably be in something where I use the martial arts. It's just a big part of my life, and it always has been. You might be wondering why they make so many of these movies. Well, they cost virtually nothing to make. You can play them all over the world in any country, and so they wind up making money. Well, we'll be back with Meryl Streep, Miranda Richardson, and Brian De Palma. But first, you know, every few years, Clint Eastwood does another Western. <laughs> of course, that doesn't mean you have to watch it. But Unforgiven does star Morgan Freeman and Gene Hackman, so we figure that's a good thing, in the story of a troubled sheriff whom Eastwood compares to Daryl Gates. I've killed women and children. Killed just about everything that walks or crawled at one time or another. And I'm here to kill you, little Bill. For what you did to Ned. How to hang with MTV. First, plug in your set. Then, spoon your handy coaxial cable. Now, you're ready to go. And fourth, it's live performances from your favorite bands, plus first look videos, cool people, cool places, and really stupid stuff. It's all live, and it's all on Hanging with MTV. The feel good show of the year, tomorrow. New music from the brothers Mac, Chris Cross. We got more fun and games with Clint Eastwood, and enough videos to choke a bear. Monday at 4. One, two, three, four, hit it! One, two, one, two! Never seen TV shows like this. Wednesday at 9, The Silencer of the Lambs. Or this. Head spins. 
Very good. Because this isn't TV, ah! it's hell. Our parents are trapped in television. We're cartoons. And they're having a devil of a time Please. getting out. Run! That'll save her. Not good. Stay tuned. Where have you been? Rated PG. Ah! Starts Friday, August 14th at a theater near you. Surprise someone special with flowers from Perry's Florist. Call 1-800-ARRANGE and Perry's will arrange it for you. Visit Perry's huge showroom and atrium with dozens of unique gift ideas, colorful balloons, cut flowers, and elegant arrangements. And Perry's gorgeous selection of fresh roses. Call 1-800-ARRANGE and charge it. It's as easy as FTD. Perry's delivers across town or across the country. Have someone special in mind? Call 1-800-ARRANGE. You arrange the occasion, let Perry's arrange the flowers. P.C. Richard & Son is New York's largest Mitsubishi dealer. Unbeatable lifetime low price guarantee. Next day delivery, seven days a week, including Sundays. Reliability, we service what we sell. Over 82 years of honesty in sales and service. 90 days, no interest for the P.C. Richard credit card. Apply today. Find out why smart shoppers say, I'd rather buy my Mitsubishi at P.C. Richard, the TV video giant. Connolly's wardrobe provided by Rick Pallack, Sherman Oaks, California. Welcome back. You know, it ought to be the motto of this town. Victory has a thousand fathers and defeat is an orphan. Which is why it's so classy of director Brian De Palma to be taking the blame for the failure of Bonfire of the Vanities. Real classy move. But later this month, He'll try to revive his career with exactly the kind of movie that first made him famous. The violent thriller that has a bit of a wink to it. Now, Raising Cain stars John Lithgow, who was the villain in one of De Palma's all-time best, Blowout, as a house husband who's got some very distinctive ways of taking care of his baby daughter. Along for the ride are his distressed spouse, played by Lolita Davidovich, and her lover, who's played by Stephen Bauer. Remember, it's supposed to be campy. John Lithgow has the ability to physically look different. And that's a quite an extraordinary ability in, in movies which so much depend on a kind of John Wayne kind of persona. That's the Duke. These guys can play anything. <sighs> look, Carter, why don't you just go home? I'll handle the babysitter. Oh. Oh. I guess you're right. I don't feel very well. I'll take care of everything. I'll just be you for a while, huh? He'd written a multiple personality character at the heart of a psychological suspense thriller. And that I was the only one to play the part. I saw Kane. He was going to do something bad. Something I'd be blamed for. I told him it was bad. Then I woke up Margo and I told her she got real mad. She told me to go to sleep. Then I woke up here. All right, you know, next up for Davidovich, she's starring with Steve Martin and Deborah Winger in a film called Leap of Faith, which comes out around Christmas time. Interesting, you know, since making Bonfire of the Vanities, De Palma himself has gotten married to producer Gail Ann Hurd, and they've had a baby daughter themselves as well, who happens to be named Lolita. Well, this one won't set any box office records, but Enchanted April just might be worth a look if you're up for kind of a quiet comedy. It's about four women in 1920s London who bolt their humdrum lives and their impossible men and rent a villa in Italy, where they find out a lot about each other. Now, along for the ride are people like Joan Plowright and Miranda Richardson, who gets to re-team here with her Dance with a Stranger director, Mike Newell. All the women come from very different backgrounds. I suppose Rose and Lottie are quite similar in that they're lower middle class. Um, Mrs. Fisher is upper middle class. And uh, Lady Caroline is, is, is way up there. I hear you're not well. I expect the journey's upset you. Now, what you need is a good dose of some simple medicine like pastor oil. Ah, don't you don't, Steve. Now, take my advice and don't neglect what might turn into an illness. This is Italy. Worry about me. I'm just 
lying here thinking. Well, that's dangerous too. Now, I should go to bed and get well. I'd say the overall mood of it is romantic. It's quite fairy tale-ish. It's very light, innocent. You know, I hadn't realized you were so pretty. That's very kind of you to say so. You're really quite lovely. I hope you make the most of it. Yes, I've been making the most of it ever since I can remember. Because it won't last. I know. I mustn't miss breakfast. All right, entertaining stuff. Well, you know, not every studio has the guts to open an expensive film in the middle of the Summer Olympics. But this weekend does indeed bring the much-awaited movie Death Becomes Her into theaters, with Meryl Streep and Goldie Hawn outdoing themselves for The Hand of Bruce Willis, who got the role after Kevin Klein was originally cast in it, only he asked for too much money, even though Willis is actually getting more than Klein asked for. In any event, Streep, Hawn, Willis, interesting combination, wouldn't you say? I rarely get a chance to act an out-and-out -out villain, you know, unmitigated by any sort of finer feelings of which human pe beings are capable. Um, I usually specialize in those fi finer feelings. <laughs> I just want you to do one thing, Hal. You brought this on yourself. Well, I did hold back. I mean, I, I did dial down a lot of that, you know, smart-ass stuff that I generally do. You know, just a different way of processing the information. Are you gonna sit there? What? I'm not gonna be your cop oh. by myself, Madeline. Oh, help! Help! I'm so happy to help. I had to hit marks. Did you ever notice? It was a lot about precision, for sure. And um, Meryl's the one who had, you know, amazing things to do. She had all kinds of obstacles, acting backwards. Damn it! You pushed me down the stairs. I knew he was funny, but I wasn't ready for how willing he was to be a patsy in this and to just be whipped around by the girls. Undead, undead, undead. It was a very collaborative process, working with you know with people who are, are at the top of their game. Really, I think I think elevates the stakes for everybody. We're sort of old friends and, and buddies and things, so we really got into this thing, especially in the shovel fight, where she was really quite the wimp. No! Oh, get out! This is pointless! Wait a minute, wait a minute, this is ridiculous. We can't even hurt each other. We can't even inflict pain! Pain! I'm talking about pain! Nothing's held back in this, I don't know if you know so I really worked it all out. I was so nice at home because I had nothing left over, you know, no hostility or anything. You're a walking lie and I can see right through you. <laughs> I don't think this is a miracle at all. Oh, can you please try and keep up? All right, you know, next up for Willis, he's already shooting it, in fact, a film called Three Rivers, set in Pittsburgh, in which he plays like a tugboat captain cop guy opposite Sarah Jessica Parker. We'll catch that soon, I'm sure. Well, that does it for us this week. Next week, a big picture special edition encore presentation all about Tom Hanks. We're going to recharge our batteries throughout August and check you out towards the end of the month when we've got singles, Honeymoon in Vegas with Nick Cage, the Twin Peaks movie, lots of fun stuff. So catch us then. Until then, this is Chris Conley saying so long for now, and we leave you with Keep It Coming from CNC Music Factory from Buffy the Vampire. Up next, the MTV Superstar Block Party, only on MTV.